Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Pesky Paul Podcast, episode 105. How are y'all doing today? Joining me is absolutely nobody once again. Uh, had a guest, but some things fell through yesterday. It happens, you know. So you're rocking with me today. It's going to be a shorter episode, probably about 15, 20 minutes long. We're just going to talk about this Red Sox team, how close we are to the wild card, what's in the cards for buying for this team, because they are still committed to being like the last or second to last team to make the playoffs in the American League and go out in the first round. That's what we can expect. But if you guys do like this content, YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I appreciate all of you who do that. Spotify iTunes, Apple Play, the rest of you guys who I appreciate so much. Make sure you hit that follow button. I appreciate all of you who do that for me also. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. So, uh, YouTube, it's a little weird. My laptop's over here, so you'll see me looking over to my right a lot. Anyway, the the wildcard standings, it ain't looking that good. The only thing we have to look up to look forward to that's really good is the Yankees are in dead last in the A at least. It's a beautiful day when the Yankees are the ones in last place and not the Red Sox. It typically, it should be the Red Sox, but nope, we're rocking with the Yankees in last place. So as it stands right now, Baltimore is actually the leader for the American League East. They are basically the best team in the AL right now. With a record of 59 and 38. Texas has their division. Twins have their division. So those are our three locks right now. Because there's really no one else that's kind of close to them. Besides maybe uh, the Angels and Seattle. Those two are kind of close. Everyone else is just barely fighting for wild card spot. Tampa Bay holds the number one wild card spot at 61 and 40 record. Technically still behind the um, behind the Orioles by I believe a half a game. Houston has a second spot at 55 and 43. Toronto has the third spot at 54 and 44. That's the place that we need to get to is 10 games over 500. Boston is your next man up. 51 and 46. Two and a half games out of that wild card spot. Seven and three in our last 10, though. We have lost two in a row, which kind of sucks. But Toronto's only six and four in their last 10. Uh, then you have the Yankees who are at 51 and 47, three and seven in their last 10. Don't you love to see it? Angels after them at 50 and 48. Be, okay, listen, being barely, and I mean barely over 500 with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, you, you got it. You got to blow it up, man. You, you got to just bite the bullet, trade them away. It's not that hard. Uh, let's see who else we got. Seattle at 49 and 48. Barely over 500, four and a half games back of a wild card spot. Cleveland at 48 and 49, five and a half games back. And then it kind of falls off a cliff. Detroit, 44 and 53. Chicago, 41 and 58. As much as you've heard me slander Andrew Benintendi, he deserves better than a 41 and 58 record. He's been kicking ass on the Chicago White Sox, and this is how they repay him. Kansas City had a 28 and 71 record. And then finally, Oakland, 28 games back of the playoffs with a 27-73 and 73 record. That's just sad. Uh, just for the fun of it, let's go over to the NL side so we get a whole view of the MLB. Atlanta in first in their division, 63-33. and 33. They're actually the kings of the MLB right now. Dodgers at 56-40. and 40. Milwaukee at 54 and 44. And just so we're clear, Christian Yelich has actually had a very, very good season. And you just love to see that. Wild card, Arizona and San Francisco are tied. Uh, they hold the top two wild card spots. Philadelphia in the third spot at 52 and 45. Tied with them are two other teams at 53 and 46. Cincinnati and Miami, who's actually making a strong playoff push, which you love to see. Then we fall off a cliff. And you notice that I didn't mention some top tier names, top, top tier teams in there. San Diego, 47 and 51, five and a half games back, six and four in their last 10. 
The Cubs, 46 and 51. Also, it's great to see Cody Bellinger averaging like 300 again, isn't it? Six games back, the New York Mets, 45 and 51, six and a half games back, five and five in their last 10. Now, that team, it's just sad, man. That team is just sad. Highest payroll in baseball history to get a 500 record. Money doesn't always buy it. That's why I can kind of see Kyle Bloom's strategy here because you're you're seeing it in perfect a perfect example with the Mets. Money doesn't buy you a great team. The talent gives you the great team. Yes, the money can get you the talent if you invest the money in the right places. The Mets are just throwing money out there like they're at a Saturday night at a strip club. They're not doing anything to really help their team. They're just throwing money away. I mean, $80 million about between Verlander and Scherzer. $80 million. I mean, I believe Verlander is making almost more than the entire athletics roster combined. And for what? Neither team's going to make the playoff. Neither team's making the playoffs unless the Mets somehow buy even more. It, it's, it's impossible. St. Louis, 44 and 54 with a 8 and 2 in the last 10. They've been hot. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but they've been hot. Adam Wainwright should have retired last year because his numbers this year are terrible. And I get it, it's going to be a send off, but he should have gone with the other two. He should have gone with Pujols and Yachty. Just called it, called it a career. It's sad. Uh, Pittsburgh, 42 and 55, 10 games back. Washington, 39 to 58, 13 games back. And in last place, my Colorado Rockies. For those of you who don't know, I am a diehard Red Sox fan, but I only say my Colorado Rockies because right now I live in Denver, about 20 minutes away from the stadium, are 38 and 59, 14 games back. Five and five in their last 10. Hey, the only reason I root for the Colorado Rockies is whenever they win, I get free chicken nuggets at McDonald's. Okay. And as a broke guy, you, you take what you can get. Some of you know the struggle. So that's kind of where we're standing with the with the Red Sox and how, how they stand with the wild card. It's going to be a hard road to even get to the playoffs. If we get there, though, nothing's impossible. We'll say nothing's impossible once you make it to the dance. Adam made that point last week. Nothing is impossible if you just make it to the dance. That's all we got to do. Just make it. I don't know how much that's going to help, but hey, if we can make it, we can make it. Let's look at our stats for the guys over the past month. We're, we're deep enough into the season now where doing a full season of stats is not irrelevant, but just not as useful for us. So we're going to take the last 30 days. Our most consistent guy has been Justin Turner, who played 21 games for us, uh, batting 309 in those 21 games. Look, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't like the Justin Turner signing. Even if he does very good with this team, I don't like the Justin Turner signing, mainly because you gave him two years, $10 million each year, when that money could have got to Xander Bogarts, who you let walk away for free. Was Xander Bogarts overpaid? Absolutely. Would he provide you more production than Justin Turner, Adam Duvall, and Corey Kluber combined? Yes, he does. It's not that hard. That's, that's where it is. Uh, Connor Wong, batting 246. On-base percentage, 290, slugging of 333. Not the worst numbers. He's cooled off a little bit. I still can't wait to see what he does. I don't think he's going to do much, though, with this team. Devers, 338 in his last month. Very good. 420 on base percentage, 662 slugging. This dude's kicking ass, as always. He's finally turned his season around. He was batting 250 for a long time. Now it's slowly, slowly coming back up to the Devers that we know and love. Jaron Duran. You ready for this? Three. 97 batting average, batting 400 in his last 30 days with 19 games played. So it's not like he's only played like four games. Two homers, two triples, eight doubles, a 426 on base percentage, and a 707 slugging percentage. 707 for a seven for a center field of Jaron Duran. Tired than Justin Turner. That's higher than literally anyone on this team. Mastaki Yoshida, 366. Those two outfield staples for me right now. Jaron Duran's going to take center for a long time. Yoshida's going to take left. Verdugo, nah. Well, we'll talk about Verdugo in a second. He, Verdugo's so up and down, it makes my head hurt. So Yoshida, probably rookie of the year. Christian Arroyo, 
two eleven, not the greatest. Seventeen games. We we need we need story back. We'll talk about story in a second. We need story back. Justin Casas, three oh eight, very good. Three seventy nine, five ninety six slugging percentage, four homers. Very good for the young guy. He's turning it around. He started off the season very very cold, but has since slowly and slowly turned it around. I really do enjoy it. Adam Duvall, two oh seven. I want him the hell off my team. Alex Verdugo. 175 batting average over the last 30 days. Like I said, Alex Verdugo has just been so hot and cold, it makes my head hurt. It, it, it's one month he's batting 160, then the next month he's batting 345, then the next month he's batting 280, and the next month he's batting 175. It, it's just so up and down. I, I just want to see a consistent 280 Verdugo. I mean, let, let me look at his actual stats right now. Give me a second. His full season. Because he hasn't had a bad season at all. Uh, bah, 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 right here. Let's see. For this season, he has still a 280 batting average, which is the exact same that he had last year. But with a higher on base percentage, a little bit better at taking walks this year, and a uh, 441 slugging. This dude's, this dude's been doing good this year, but it's just so hot and cold. He has some months where he's amazing and some months where he's shit. I, I don't know what to think about it. Kike needs to be DFA'd right now. Batting under 200. It, it, time's done. Stand up. Salute Kike. Let him go. Give him give him a good send-off. He did really good for us in 2021. But you just got to send him off. There's been some talks about sending him back to the Dodgers because they can use some shortstop and infield depth or a utility guy. But, uh, Ref Schneider, 256 for 14 games. Been decent. Good utility player. Uh, David Hamilton was not good. Only batting 115. He's still young. He's still very speedy. Uh, Yu Chang, not good. Jorge Alfaro, not good. Bobby Dahlbeck, atrocious. Only played two games, but they were in atrocious two games. Taylor Scott got a nap bat, by the way. I don't know when the hell that happened. Taylor Scott got a nap bat. Oh, I love the Boston Red Sox, don't you? So, we we have someone to look forward to. That's Trevor Story. Been hurt all year. Just finally getting back into it. Uh, played with uh, Portland. Was up in Maine on Friday night, yesterday. He only played five innings, but he had a three-run bomb to left field. Um, giving Portland a 6-0 lead in the fifth inning. And then he was taken out. Um, in his first at bat, Tori took a full count, full count walk and was driven in on a Marcelo Mayer triple triple. Sorry, I'm mixing up my words in the bottom of the first story finished the night going one for two with three RBIs, two runs and a walk. Good numbers, you know, let him let him take some time. We're we're kind of in a rush because our middle infield is shit right now between Christian Arroyo, who hasn't been playing terrible, but it's more of a bench utility guy and Kike Hernandez slash Pablo Reyes. Not doing well at the shortstop position. We could use whatever help we can get to bring somebody in and get that. Okay. Uh, next. And we're just going to go through these quickly. Because like I said, it's only going to be a 15, 20 minute episode today. I'm not going to. You, you, you know how it is. Red Sox. Trade deadline is in one week. So next Saturday, we will be hitting hard on the trade deadline. I'm going to try and bring in a couple guests, and hopefully we'll be able to talk all the trade deadline stuff. So, the biggest thing that we need to remember is our bullpen is terrible right now. But that's because we're missing John Schreiber. John Schreiber has been out for the past month or two, and he's had an amazing, and I mean an amazing year so far. Once he comes back, it opens up some doors for us. Because we're going to have that right-handed setup guy back. And our bullpen's going to be at least more stable for the last part of the game with Schriever and Jansen. That means we just need probably a lefty arm out of the bullpen. So it's looking like the two things that the Red Sox are going to pursue is a shortstop and a lefty arm out of the bullpen. And if we can get those at least decent, like I said, Paul DeYoung. Um, he's sharing time with, uh, what's his name? Tommy. F no, not Tommy fan. Tommy Edmond. That sounds right. You'll, you'll probably roast me in the comments. I don't care. Um, he's not the full everyday starter for the Cardinals and the Cardinals suck right now. 
so I could see us getting him for decently cheap, you know? Um, and then in terms of a bullpen arm, there are a couple guys that could potentially be around, but one guy from within the system we got to look at. And it's going to be the last thing we talk about today. Yeltsin Lament. He was with the Colorado Rockies. I think he got released in June. And the Red Sox picked him up and moved him to the uh, bullpen or the closing role for the Worcester Woo Sox. You got to love the name, the Woo Sox. I hate it. it the the logo, if, if y'all remember like three years ago when I was on the show with Ari, the OGs remember this. Uh, we, we spent a good eight, nine minutes just laughing at the Woo Sox logos. It was probably one of the funniest times I've ever had. But he's been with the Woo Sox as the closer and has been doing extremely well. I mean, you got to remember, this guy was a Cy Young candidate four year, three, four years ago. He was fourth. And he kind of flamed out. He wasn't really good. Um, now with the AAA Worcester, the 31-year-old seems to have captured at least a small fraction of his form that once made him a top-end starting pitcher in the big leagues. Going into Thursday night, my apologies, he has not been a closer. Uh, Lament made five appearances for the Woo Sox. Four of them were starts and posted a 172 ERA while just allowing nine hits and striking out 15 batters in 15 and two-thirds innings. So a caper nine rate of nine and a 1.72 ERA. I know it's AAA. Don't get me wrong. I know it's AAA. But that's still very good. That is still insanely good. Um, His fifth start was four and a third innings, letting up three runs on five hits to go four strikeouts and a walk. Uh, the Red Sox had a clear plan for Lament once he joined the organization, but the way he has pitched, he could aid Boston in the near future. Lament has experience both as a starter and a reliever and has a type of flexibility only helps his cause to get to the bigs faster. So we, we need the relief help too. I mean, because as this article says, we have a surplus of lefties in the bullpen, but none of them are really good. Joe Jockis, Chris Murphy, Jolie Rodriguez, Brandon Walter, Richard Blair, and Brennan Bernardino. Really? Any, any can, can you guys name me any one of those guys you'd like to see on the team in two years? Nobody? Oh, nobody? Me too. I understand that. I don't want any of those guys on my team in the next two years. So, Lamet could be a guy that comes up and helps out right away. And I'll be very happy about that. So, with that being said, I apologize that it was a much shorter episode than usual. But when, when you don't have a co-host and you got to make things up on the fly, you do what you got to do. You know what I mean? So, that being said, thank you guys so much for listening slash watching this video. God bless each and every single one of you. And I will see you guys next time. I lost my best friend to 23. She left her body and hovered above me. I saw no shadow. I looked around. Searched every building and home that I found. I saw no shadow. I felt a glow. The warmth inside me kept me afloat. I felt like heaven. I found my bones. And gave me comfort when I feel alive. Now you're gone. I'm alone. I guess it's time to get better. Through the pain. I will go alone If I fall, break my bones I will scream even louder Cause I'm not dying alone I lost my best friend to 23 She left her body and hovered above me Again and again I went through hell
dare to death But I keep fighting with each living breath I saw no way out from where I stood Felt like the fire had burned me for Now you're gone, I'm alone I guess it's time to get better